Hey everyone, my name is Josh. I uh, am the blogger for the MSUC Guy blog. And uh, lately, I've done a couple quick Google Hangout videos and then uploaded them to YouTube. And uh, still getting comfortable with that format, but um, I like it. So here's another one. This is my, uh, my third video. And uh, still doing regular blogging. Uh, we'll continue to put how-tos together and um, share useful tips, explore new products, uh, new new feature releases, et cetera. Uh, but this is kind of uh, something I'm finding my groove with for now. So uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, federating within Skype for Business and Link Server. Um, before I do that, I, I just want to say I have it pointed. I've had it pointed out to me that the shirts and the background uh, look like I have them just out there hanging to dry. Um, so if that's the case, I may need to revisit my background uh, for videos. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this is a Rackspace t-shirt up here. It's got the Rackspace logo, uh, with the word Rackspace on it. And then we've got to the cloud before victory, another Rackspace shirt, uh, I think from the cl cloud launch. Um, just trying to put a little bit of Rackspace bling in the background because I, I am a racker. I do work for Rackspace. Um, but at any rate, if it looks like I'm hanging shirts out to dry, I think I need to uh, revisit the studio look. Um, for now, there they are. And I assure you, they are not hanging out to dry. So uh, moving on, what I'm going to do is share out a sway that I made. Uh, this isn't really a sway that I'm posting out by itself as a standalone presentation because it's a very simplified sway. It's just really used to uh, to be talked about rather than standalone as a presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is share my screen, uh, go over the sway, and we're going to discuss why a business, a company, uh, may or may not want to implement federation, what some of the challenges are to implementing it, uh, concerns are, and then what some of the obvious benefits are of it. Uh, so without further ado, let me go ahead and share the screen here. Okay, here we go. Perfect. All right, Skype for business, to federate or not to federate. Um, I'm really not a Shakespeare fan, uh, so the, uh, the, the whole uh, Shakespeare theme here really doesn't have any real meaning to it. I just couldn't get the whole to federate or not to federate uh, sentence out of my head. So this is what I went with from my title screen. But uh, yeah, no funny story or clever thing to add to that. Moving forward here. So at the heart of this conversation, let's start with what is federation? When we say federation, is this what we're talking about? This kind of federation? Something to do with the Starship Enterprise? Something Star Trek based? Uh, well, many people in the IT industry have been um, pegged as nerds and geeks. Uh, this conversation does not actually have anything to do with Star Trek. Um, it is not anything to do either with uh, Active Directory Federation services, as a matter of fact. This is just a Skype for Business and Link uh, feature that we're talking about here. And also, Skype for Business Online, I should mention. You can federate from there as well. Um, but what we're talking about has nothing to do with Star Trek. And uh, our friend Captain Picard here would second that thought. Um, I know, another Star Trek picture, and I promise that's the last. I, I watched a fair amount of Star Trek as a kid, okay, and, and I did like it, so I'm, I'm going to own that. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll move past the Star Trek pictures. The kind of federation we're talking about is more of a business-to-business -business solution here. So um, cue the very generic uh, stock photography uh, picture here of uh, two hands shaking between computers. It's supposed to be representing communication between two different companies through their technology barriers. Um, so we're talking about allowing an internal IM system like Skype for Business or Link to be connected to somebody else's internal Skype for Business or Link system uh, so that they can communicate via IM or audio video to each other uh, outside of their own companies and into the other person's company. Uh, that's pretty awesome and pretty powerful. That is the heart of federation. That's what we're talking about here. 
So now that we've established that, let's move on and discuss some of the challenges that can come with implementing Federation. This uh, little picture over here is kind of supposed to represent the uh, somewhat of a quagmire that we, we kind of have to deal with when we're figuring out how exactly we would roll this out. Uh, do we want a free-for-all scenario, uh, one that is kind of known as open federation, in which um, all employees within the company are allowed to federate with anyone outside of the company who is allowed to federate with us? Um, or do we want granular access, where we lock this down to specific users or specific uh, federation partners? First off, do we allow all employees within the company to communicate with all external users? Um, or are we going to lock that down to specific users within the company talking to our external partners? Do we have to have separate policies in place that will say, this group of users is allowed to federate. This group of users is not allowed to federate. Uh, going beyond that, do we allow external communication with any domain out there who is also set up for open federation? Or do we lock that down to specific domains of specific federation partners? Um, I have seen Open Federation implemented a lot, more than I, I thought I would, actually. I thought this would be locked down in a lot more environments with some pretty big names, too. Um, but we have to keep in mind that despite these questions, uh, this is a very secure channel of communication. Uh, everything is done with SSL certificates, and, uh, and it's a very secure method of communicating with external partners. Uh, putting that aside, though, there are still other concerns that companies need to weigh when they're making these decisions. Uh, that last bullet point there, do we need to allow some users to federate with certain external partners, but not others? All right, so this, this is taking our questions to a level that Link is not really capable of uh, taking us by itself, or Skype for Business, for that matter, at this point. We cannot say that this partner is allowed to federate with us, but only this group of users within our company can communicate with that partner while another group within our company can communicate with a different partner. We, there's no way to granular, granularly divvy that up within Link or Skype for Business. Um, and you would think that this would be kind of a, a normal feature that would go right along with Federation, um, but it just it isn't. It hasn't been for a few iterations of the product now. Um, there are some pushes out there and suggestions to try to include that. Um, but I don't know if Microsoft's going to jump on that or not because there are other companies out there, Microsoft partners or non-partners, that have created third-party solutions um, to enable this functionality within your environment. Now, we're talking about a third-party add-on or a third-party product altogether that has to be included in your environment. Uh, and this can be a fairly significant investment uh, cost-wise. But... Um, it is something that if you require that level of granularity, you will need to look into. All right, another challenge that we have to face here is from the corporate legal side of things. Now, uh, we do have some very friendly looking lawyers here. I presume they're lawyers. This guy looks like he could actually be a politician over on the right, uh, so uh, yeah, who knows? But uh, the, the important point here is that does the corporate legal team have governance and compliance concerns that need to be addressed? Okay, so in other words, do we have to retain this type of communication in some way? Do we have to archive it? Then do we have to provide a disclaimer that we're archiving to our, to our uh, federated partners? These are all things that we need to think about and, and talk about with our legal team to see if they have any say or concern or or other voice they want to uh, put out there about this particular topic. Um, and then beyond that, we need to go, you know, take a look if we're going to need to uh, engage this third-party solution even deeper because if they want to provide custom disclaimers to federated contacts, there's also no way to do that within Link or Skype for Business. You can provide an archiving policy, I'm sorry, an archiving disclaimer, and that will provide a generic non-customized disclaimer to federated contacts. Um, but if that does not say what your legal team says it needs to say, then you're up a creek there. The only other way to set a custom disclaimer is via a uh, new dash CS client policy using the IM warning. Um, and, and that is a solution that is not a perfect one either because 
the warning that will display in the in the uh, conversation window is not just for federated users. It's for everybody that that user communicates with that has that new client uh, CS client policy assigned. So if we need to have that granular level of disclaimers and notifications, et cetera, again, out of the box functionality and link and Skype for business is not going to cut it here. We're going to have to revisit that third party add on or solution. All right. Moving beyond this, let's take a look at some of the benefits. Here we got the good old blue man group working together to make something cool, I guess. I I don't really know. I've I never really looked into the blue man group or seen their shows or been very interested. But the point here is collaboration. Collaboration is key. When we don't want to have to wait on somebody to respond to email whenever they're good and ready, and we need an answer from them now, and they are at a different company, you see we have a we have a, a project in the air, let's say. And this project is a collaboration between groups uh, from two different companies. And at this point, our group internally works with speed and efficiency. They're IMing each other. They're jumping in uh, maybe a persistent chat room together. They're having uh, web conferences using uh, Skype for Business or Link. That's all fine and good, and they're chugging along. Suddenly, they need input from the team on the other side of the pipe. Well, let's send them an email and wait to hear back from them. Or let's call them and leave a voicemail and wait till they get back with us. Or if we're federated with them, Let's IM them. And once we can see that they are available via IM, we send that message, they reply back with the quick answer to what we need, and we move on. Uh, so, so the key here is that we're not waiting on email or voicemail. We are moving to a quick, real-time, on-the-go solution that enables more efficiency and more productivity between cross-company projects like this. All right, let's look at one of the more obvious benefits more revenue. So if we have better collaboration, that will translate to faster time to market on different products or ideas. That will equal more time for our other projects. If we have other projects, then we're cutting our time related costs um, in terms of getting things to the market faster and how much uh, product we can put forward with the time we're given. And cutting time related costs then translates to more revenue. More revenue, that is the key. Those are the two words that uh, senior leadership and, um, and, and other stakeholders within the company at the highest levels, that's what they wanna hear. They wanna hear that you found a way to increase revenue, to cut costs. And this is the type of tool that is the definition of enabling that. So uh, th that's a really big, strong point there that we need to put forward in our benefits. Let's go to our last point here on benefits. Again, with the money, yes. Why? Because it's always, always about the money. That is at the heart of a business. The business exists to create money. Um, it, it doesn't exist just to, unless you're like a nonprofit. It, you know, it doesn't exist to just... Uh, chase down a cause or, or do good a business is there to create money. And there are other side benefits to that. But when you boil down the very essence and existence of a business, that is what it's there for. So the fact that it's always about the money means that any way we can save money in the company is a good argument for whatever we're trying to convince senior leadership of. Here, one of those main points is we can cut back on our third-party web conferencing software costs. We may be able to completely do away with a third-party solution altogether if the only people we need to have external meetings and audio-video conferences with uh, are people that we can federate with via Skype or uh, Skype for Business or Link, then we can just completely eliminate that third-party solution and save a ton of money. Maybe we have multiple companies we, feder we, we need to work with, though, and Federation's only going to work with half. The other half are not on the link or Skype for Business trains, and we still got to solve for that. Okay, we keep the third-party solution around for them. However, the required minutes and, uh, and, and data usage uh, that we have for that plan, if we're on, if we're on such a plan for that third-party solution, is now cut in half. We don't need to spend so, so much money on all the minutes for the solution or all the data that's being transferred um, or the amount of people that can attend the sessions. 
we're able to cut that down. So in the end, we're still saving money by utilizing a feature or a component that already comes with Skype for Business or Link. Um, so again, again with the money. And yes, it's going to always be again with the money because you go as you go to the decision makers within your company to justify the purchase of something new or to justify a new feature such as this, you're going to need to tell them what the what it means for the money in the end, how this is going to benefit the company. Whenever you can say that it benefits them financially, that's a great argument. So uh, again, this was very short and a very terse overview nothing way in depth or anything like that. And there are probably several other points that we could add to both the challenges and benefits there. But I just wanted to go over a few of them to highlight some of the really obvious things. Uh, you know, if someone's sitting there weighing why they may or may not want federation, what kind of things come into play, hopefully some of these points offer them a couple uh, bits of, uh, you know, food for thought that they can chew on that they didn't already have in mind especially the legal concerns that may come into play or uh, concerns from your, your, your security team. They may want to sit there and hash out what are the implications or ramifications of implementing Federation. Um, so again, just a few pieces of food for thought. I hope this helped. If you're interested in any more of my content, uh, there's a few more videos that you can find at blog.msucguy.com, as well as a uh, several handfuls of how-to videos and new feature release um, new feature announcements and uh, diving into things like Sway, which I just uh, did this presentation on. Uh, there are several several blog posts going into new releases that Microsoft has come out with within Office 365 as well, if that's your cup of tea. Um, and if you're a hybrid type of person, I've even dived into the on-prem slash online services hybrid scenarios with Azure AD Connect. So I, why don't you go ahead and Head over there, visit that, or uh, feel free to like the video or, or leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.